the Galaxy M51. It's undoubtedly the best M series phone you can own at this point. It's got a massive 7000 mAh battery. You've probably got power banks that are smaller than this. For the first time, you get a Super AMOLED Plus display with FHD Plus resolution, Infinity O design, a 64 megapixel camera with IntelliCam features, reverse charging so you can charge other devices with a cable, a 25 watt super fast charger in the box, and a much better looking premium design overall. And all of this at a price point that's hard to beat. But you still might be wondering whether the price is right for the features the M51 offers or should you put in a bit more money and get yourself the Nord, the K20 Pro or the Realme X3. Well, let's find out. But guys, before we move on, it'll be great if you could drop a like, hit that subscribe button and that bell icon and support my channel. And now let's open the box and see everything we get. And the first thing you get is the Galaxy M51. It's got a pretty solid feel and it ought to be with that 7000 mAh battery that would get charged with this 25 watt super fast charger and you get a type C cable which can also allow you to reverse charge other devices. You get your SIM ejector tool and that's about it. You do not get a protective case cover, you do not get a protective film or a screen protector on the display and there are no earphones in the box. And I guess that's a great strategy to keep the prices of these phones low. Now let's start with the design of the M51 and there are two aspects to it. First, how it looks and second, how it feels. In terms of physical appearance, I really like what Samsung has done with the design of their M series phones now. The M31s had a premium gradient design to it. The M51 has a solid color but still an extremely classy finish. The material itself is a combination of plastic and glass which ensures a lightweight body and it's also lesser prone to fingerprints and cracks. And you'll mostly end up putting up a case cover in any case, so it doesn't matter as much. Now, Samsung couldn't place an optical fingerprint sensor on the screen because of the 7000 mAh battery, which does take a lot of space. So they side mounted a fingerprint sensor on the power button itself, which is actually faster than your regular optical fingerprint sensors. And I simply love the placement. It's really natural and very quick. They also manage to keep the side bezels a lot thinner than usually what I see on the M series phones. So you get a more bezel less experience and that's always a nice thing. And by the way, this is Gorilla Glass 3. It's nowhere close to the 7 gen Gorilla Glass, but it's still pretty tough. In terms of ergonomics, well, I'm not gonna lie, it's heavy, but again, how else do you get a 7,000 mAh battery capacity? And while the device may still feel thick to you, but given that they've got a 7,000 mAh battery inside, it's not actually as thick as it could have been. Now it does support two SIM cards and one micro SD card, all three mounted at the same time, so that's really great. You still get your 3.5mm headphone jack, a Type-C port for data syncing and charging, and bottom firing speakers. Now there is a speaker grill at the top, but that's just the earpiece for your phone calls. It does not support stereo speakers, so that would have been great, but it's not there. Also, the M51 is not water resistant and that's all right. You don't really get to see phones in this price segment to have water and dust resistance in any case. And now let's talk about the software. So it's running Android 10 with Samsung One UI 2.1, but do note that One UI 2.1 is not the same on the M series phones as it is on flagship phones. So there are some features like link to windows, Bixby routines, edge lighting and secure folder that are just not available. But you do get Dolby Atmos that works when you've got your earphones connected or paired. And that's great because it takes your sound level to a whole another level. Really glad to see that Samsung introduced the screen recorder, the native Android screen recording with the Galaxy M51. It's been missing on all other M series phones. So thank you, Samsung. Everything else is pretty much standard. You know, you get Google and Microsoft suite of apps. You get a couple of Samsung pre-installed apps. You do get the FM radio. That's surprisingly missing on all flagship devices. And then there are just a few other apps that you may or may not need. So if you don't need it, you can just long press on them and you can uninstall and get rid of them. And of course you can go about customizing and personalizing your settings to just better suit your personal taste and preferences. So it's, you know, it's Samsung's One UI and there's a whole lot of features that you can play around with uh, to make this phone really work for yourself. And for a few of those who are wondering whether good luck is supported or not, well, bad news, it's still not supported on the M series phones. And now let's talk about that display. You get a large 6.7 inch full HD Super AMOLED Plus display with a tiny hole punch at the center making room for the 32 megapixel selfie camera. It's also HDR10 compatible for YouTube, but not Netflix yet. The colors look good as they always do on a Super AMOLED display and the screen is decently bright enough for easy viewing, even in the brightest of days outdoors. 
So whether you're gaming or watching videos, you get a pretty rich big screen experience with really good colors. I also couldn't help but notice that the screen in M51 is more bezel-less than some earlier M series phones and that is a good sign. And now stepping on to the performance. It's an upper mid-range smartphone from Samsung and it just about delivers in performance. It features a Snapdragon 730G processor, the same processor you get in the Galaxy A71 or even the Vivo X50. Now in 730G, the G stands for gaming and it implies that these processors are optimized to deliver a better gaming experience than the regular Snapdragon 730. Now games might take a while to launch and load, but once they do, the gameplay is quite satisfactory. You'll be able to play without any hiccups, be it online or offline gaming. The M51, it's able to optimize itself to deliver the best performance to you for a no lag gaming experience. Now, despite playing for about 30 minutes, there's also no heating of any sort. So rest assured, you can play this on for longer and still not feel uncomfortable. And now let's talk about that quad camera setup. So you've got a 64 megapixel main camera, 12 megapixel ultra wide, five megapixel depth sensor, and a five megapixel macro lens. Now the camera quality is actually quite impressive. I took some samples and here those are for you. So just have a look, you know, I'm gonna make all of these available for download in the link in the description below. So feel free to download these pictures and check it out for yourself. And I think the cameras do a pretty good job. And in my opinion, quite honestly, I think all the cameras in this price segment are so similar to each other. It's just the difference in the way they treat or process the image that could be different. And quite honestly, again, some people might like how OnePlus does it, some might like how Redmi does it, and you may like how Samsung does it. So again, just download these images and check it out for yourself. What's also important are the camera features that assist you in taking better photos. For example, you get single take now. In terms of video recording, you can shoot up to 4K quality videos, but limited to 30 FPS only. And surprisingly, unlike the M31S, the M51's video mode does not allow you to switch between the front and the rear camera. That's a little odd given that the M31S already has that feature. And there are a lot of these modes that are available in the more section that you can explore, including the night hyperlapse, slow motion, and super steady mode. Also, the camera by default is set to 16 megapixel and you'll have to manually switch to 64 megapixel if that's what you need. But the difference in quality is very minimal and the 16 megapixel mode actually offers better HDR capability, so you might want to stick to that. And lastly, that 7,000 milliampere hour battery is just crazy. It's nothing less than walking with a power bank and the phone can last you the entire weekend on a single charge with moderate use, which is insane. And here's what I can say. If you're always on your phone playing games, watching movies or videos, you will be able to keep your battery anxiety at bay and be able to just enjoy. All you need to know is that you're not gonna get a better battery capacity in any phone, especially in this price segment. So overall, given the features, the battery and the price point, the M51 offers a very unique proposition that doesn't exist in this price range. I'm not saying it's the best buy in this price segment because that's subjective, but given what it offers, it's unique and no phone matches that. If performance is very important to you over let's say the camera or the battery, you can definitely consider other smartphones in the same price segment that offers better performance, but considering design, camera, battery, features, everything else that makes up a smartphone, I really think the M51 would be a very good purchase. Anyway, that's it from me guys on the Galaxy M51. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget to drop a like, hit the subscribe button and that bell icon. I'll see you guys in the next one.